Hello everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. In this lesson, number 121, I'm going to talk about transacted messages. Now, this is a re-record of a prior lesson of number 121, uh, where I inadvertently talked about transacted events. And what I want to do here is clarify some of the issues in that prior video based on some of the comments that I did receive on Software Architecture Monday. Speaking of Software Architecture Monday, you can go to my website to get all of the catalog of all the lessons I've done so far. As a matter of fact, this is a useful place not only to see the lessons, of which you can then watch them embedded within my website or go to YouTube, but also this is where I'm storing all of the links and references to each of those videos. Much of the material uh, that I do within Software Architecture Monday uh, comes from two books that I wrote with Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and also Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Also, because this has to do with messaging, uh, another couple of resources that would be good. Uh, I did write uh, Java Message Service Second Edition um, by O'Reilly and also on the O'Reilly platform recorded uh, two different videos on enterprise messaging that show a lot of code demos as well as techniques for messaging. So where I wanted to really start, which I didn't do in the prior version of this video, is to show a scenario in which we may run into problems sending multiple messages. Now, let's say that I've got four services here, service A and then B through D and I want to send a message to all of these. One of the ways we can do that to avoid the whole thing about transactions is to use basically publish and subscribe messaging with broadcast or a notification service using topics. So I make a request to post something to A. A has to create an event and then send that event over to let's say a topic. Now once I do that that message is then received by all of the events and so there are all of the services. So there's no coordination in terms of the timing I send one single message. However, what I wanted to clarify from the prior version of this is that there are times when we may in fact need to send different messages. So let's say that service C over here uh, has a different kind of message format, different kind of data. And matter of fact, so does service D. Service D over here on the bottom actually has a blue message. Well, I also may want to monitor the queue depth for auto scaling. I may have some secure information, or it may just simply be three different messages. In that case, I need to change my topology to actually use a point-to-point -point type of technique using queues, where service B has its dedicated queue that I send information for, service C has its own dedicated queue, and D. And that's the scenario I described in the prior version of this video. And let me show you what happens in this scenario. A request is made to A to post something or to process something. I generate a message for service B and that gets sent to service B's queue. Service B then picks up that message. I then do some other processing. I generate a message for service C, send that message over to the queue and service C picks it up. I then have a blue message that I create, send that over to service D and it picks it up. This is the scenario and is a real scenario when in fact we can't use broadcast messaging for a generic kind of message and a generic payload. In this case, this is more of a command than it is an event. However, there are times when we do need to send multiple messages, and that's where we run into problems. And let me show you the issue and then how to solve that issue. So let's say we have a request made to service A. It generates a message for service B, sends that over to service B, and service B receives it and starts to process that. Meanwhile, I do some more processing. I create a message for service C, send that over there, and then, oops, I get an in-process exception. In other words, something happened within service A that prevents me from processing any further. Well, the problem in this case 
is I've already sent messages and service B, it's on its way processing that message and doing other types of processing based on that, as is service C. Now, these kind of things can be solved various, with various transactional sagas, but what I wanted to show you was another alternative, and that's to transact the session or the channel. Now, I'm gonna show you the code and how to do that in a little bit, but let me show you how it's done. So the first thing I'm going to do is start a transaction. Now this is not a database transaction, but rather a transaction on the message broker itself. Now watch what happens based on transactions, because this does get a little bit confusing. So I create a message, send it to service B, but watch what happens. Service B, because it's within a transaction, does not pick up that message yet. I continue my processing. I now send service C's message, but notice it doesn't get to service C yet because it's within the scope of a transaction. This is an all or nothing release. I create service D's message, send it to the queue. Now watch what happens. Once I do a commit on that session or that channel within the broker, watch what happens. All of these get released and now can be processed. Now, it's important to note, however, when we're talking about transactions, that I don't have any involvement in the processing of that message in services B, C, and D. My transactional boundary and context is with service A and the corresponding queues that I'm sending information to. As a matter of fact, service B, C, and D have their own transactional context in which they're processing the message. And so this really kind of answers that question, but how do I control the transactions within B, C, and D? And that's something that we can't do within messaging or even event-driven architecture. Now I wanna show you how transactions can really kind of be helpful here. Uh, we make the same request. I start the transaction, I create the message and send it to service B. Notice it doesn't get received yet though. I create a message, send it to service C, and then I get an in-process exception, some sort of error condition within service A that prevents me from processing. However, because I used a transaction, service B and C have not yet received that message. Now I can issue a rollback on that session or channel and watch what happens. That message simply goes away. It's never been received by service B or C. Now, to transact messages, I'm going to show you both JMS and AMQP. And within JMS, I'm going to create my JMS context. And notice here, I mark the JMS context as session transacted. And also then I do my processing. And then I take the JMS context and do a commit on that because that's what really houses that JMS session. I can also do a JMS context dot rollback. Now within AMQP, it's done a little differently. And let me show you uh, how it's done with RabbitMQ. And so I have all my connection factory, which I then get my connection. And from the connection, I get my channel. That channel in AMQP is synonymous to a session in JMS. And as a matter of fact, we call it the transactional aspect. So now I do a TX select. And again, this is in RabbitMQ uh, API and now do my processing, and then I can channel either a transaction commit or a TX rollback. And those are some of the techniques within each of these of being able to wrap multiple messages within a transaction so that I'm ensured that all of those get released when I am completed, have completed my processing. And so this has been Lesson 121, a re-record of this on transacted messages. And so stay tuned uh, in two weeks for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you so much.